S Corporation Tax General Concepts Problem 3. At the beginning of year one, Apple, an individual shareholder, has an adjusted basis of $20 in Fruit Tree Corporation stock, an S Corporation. At the beginning of year one, Apple also has personally loaned Fruit Tree Corporation $10, which the face value is also $10. In year one, Fruit Tree Corporation allocates Apple $27 of loss. In year two, Fruit Tree Corporation allocates Apple $52 of income. What amount of income or loss must be reported by Apple in years one and two, and what is the effect on the stock and loan basis amounts in these years? This topic tends to be one of the most difficult for students when you're dealing with S corporations because S corporations, as I've mentioned many times, S stands for small business, but I also like to think of S as simple. S corporations tend to be one of the simplest versions when it comes to tax rules of the business entities. There's not too much crazy things out there because that's what was designed for Congress to give these certain tax benefits to make, you know, incentivize certain businesses, small businesses. And again, they didn't want things to get too com you know, complex, convoluted, because then it goes away from small business. So this question is asking about the amount of income or loss that must be reported in years one and two by Apple, and then what's the effect on the stock and loan basis amounts in these years. And the idea here is that, as you know of S corporations, you've seen in other problems in my discussions, there's when you personally loan money to an S corporation, you have a, a separate loan basis, and you're not allowed to take into account any of the loan basis, regardless whether you personally loan it or not in your stock basis, because S corporations are separate. So the, the best way to do this is just to go by each year. Go chronologically at the beginning of year one. Okay, so let's let's put year year one. So the beginning of year one, Apple is an individual shareholder, has a basis in Fruit Tree Corporation stock. So A B is for adjusted basis. And adjusted basis, remember the idea there is it's like tax capital. You just it's adjusted basis is just a concept of keeping track of your capital for calculating gains, losses, things like that. That's all it is, it's a tax concept. So that is where we start the adjusted basis of $20. At the beginning of year one, Apple also has personally loaned the um, Fruit Tree Corporation $10. Now, let's start by saying this is the stock basis in year one, and then this is a loan basis. We keep them separate in year one. In year one. So the adjusted basis of the loan at the beginning of the year, we're actually not told. But based on the information, this is the beginning of the year, and we're told that the that Apple personally loaned $10 to Fruit Tree Corporation, and the face value is also $10, which means there hasn't been any change. So it's going to be $10 there. Now, if there was a difference between the basis and the loan amount, first off, it wouldn't be at the beginning of the year and in, in the first year. It would be, you'd be told like multiple years in. And you're going to see that ours is going to change as we go. So in year one, Fruit Tree Corporation allocates $27 of loss to Apple. Okay, allocates to Apple $27 of loss. Now, we, we set up our adjusted basis. Remember the rule for S corporations. And that is when we, we go through, we calculate our losses, which we're told. The amount of loss attributable to Apple is $27. The loss amount is limited to the bases. So the adjusted basis of the stock and the loan amount. The stock and the loan amount. And again, for the loan amount, it has to be personally loaned to the corporation. It can't just be any loan amount. It's not like partnership where you get to take into account all the loans. And even partnership, you get to just join it all together. The partnership um, interest, you get to add together the basis of the partnership interest plus the loan, and it, it, it sums together. No, we, do keep it we keep it separate for the loan. And I'm going to show you how, how it's going to change in this problem. But that is the rule. It's limited to the adjusted basis of stock plus the loan amount. So we get to take into account both of those. So year one, this is pretty simple. But we have to take into account the effect of the loan, the stock and loan basis in these years. And I'm going to show you what I mean because you're, going to, you're about to see. We have $27 of loss in year one. Again, we're still working at year one. This is going to be our year one calculation. So year one is going to be over here on the left. Year two is going to be over here on the right. So we have $27 of loss. Now, if we sum together, taking into account, again, the rule. Loss is limited to the adjusted basis of stock plus loan. We're going to have 20 plus 10, $30. So we are able to take all $27 of, of the loss. We're able to take all $27 of the loss. So that means that Apple is able to take advantage of that $27. Now, there might be other loss limitations attributable to Apple, like the passive activity loss rules or at-risk rules. But again, those are... 
specific to Apple, and there's no differences between partnerships and S-corporations from that regard. They both are subject to those rules. So that won't be um, anything you know, unique to S corporations versus partnerships. That, and that's why we don't really go into that. But the idea here is that Apple can take all $27 of the loss. So to ask the question, basically we're doing two things in this question. We're looking at how much of the loss that's given to us in the problem, which we're told $27 of loss or income, which we're told income in the next year, does Apple have to actually record or can actually take? And we just determined that all $27 can be reported by Apple, again, subject to Apple's respective limitations individually on their return. Okay, we got that. We also need to consider the effect on the loan basis and stock basis because we've got $20 and $10, and the rule is income increases basis, loss decreases basis. So income increases basis and loss decreases basis. So the idea is if we have $30 total in our bases, considering the stock and loan for our loss limit rule, do we reduce the stock basis down to zero and then reduce the loan basis down to three? Or do we do the opposite order? Do we reduce the loan basis down to zero and the stock basis down to three? Which which way do we go? And the, the correct way we do first, so this is the reduction. So now we're going to do the reduction. So again, try to think what's going on here. We have a total amount total adjusted basis for loss of $30. We have $27 of loss. That means that $3 of basis is going to be left between these two. Now, one of these, or how do we, basically that $3 that's left over, that $3 of adjusted basis left, how are we going to put that between the stock and loan? And the reason why that's important, you might be wondering, does that even matter? Yes, if we sold our stock the beginning of next year, or we paid off our loan, that was going to have an effect on how much gain we have to record depending on which one it goes where. So basically, there's tax law that provides the answer. And the answer is, first, we reduce the stock basis. So what I'm saying is $27, we first are going to reduce down our stock basis to zero. And then second, we reduce the loan basis. So the first... 27, we reduce 20 from the stock because we can only go to zero. You can't have negative basis. That is one thing to consider. You can't have negative basis. All right. There's a famous tax case where named Parachi, where the court actually said that negative basis like Sasquatch does not exist. It's not, it's not a real thing. You can't have negative basis. So you can't go below on the stock basis. You can't go negative. So the idea is that $27, first, we take stock down to zero. Next, right, which we have seven to go, okay, 20 plus seven. Next, we reduce the adjusted basis of the loan. So that brings our adjusted basis of the loan to three. So the adjusted basis in the stock, after we take advantage of this $27 loss, which again, remember, Apple gets to take that on their tax return, is going to bring the stock basis down to zero, and then we're going to bring the loan basis down to three. So that is the order. So again, when we are reducing the basis for taking a loss, First, we reduce the stock basis down, and once we get to zero, then we go to the loan basis, and then we bring that down to zero. Now, you might be wondering, well, wh what if both go to zero? Well, then you wouldn't be able to take any more loss, right? Because think about it. If this loss was 32, you'd be limited to 30, the total basis, and it would bring both down to zero, and two would have to carry over. Two dollars of loss would carry over, but we don't have that. We have less than that. So the question is, what do we do with the three dollars left? We give zero, to, um, zero basis next year to stock, and three to the loan. And we bring that over next year. So year two, year two stock versus loan, we bring over that basis. It rolls over in next year. Rolls over in next year. So stock, we're going to have a adjusted basis of zero. And loan, we're going to have a adjusted basis of three. Now next year, we're told that Apple has $52 of income. When it comes to income, you just have to report it unless you have a loss that carried over. So if we had a $32 loss and $2 of loss carried over, then we would be able to offset that that part of that income by that $2 of loss. But if you have income and there's no loss to offset it, the rule is you have to report income. Remember in tax law, income very broad, deductions and losses very narrow. Basically, Congress put lots of limits on deductions and losses. That's kind of a theme to think about in tax. Um, you know, and again, losses and deductions are benefits to taxpayers. Income is not because then it makes you have to pay tax. So the, the $52 of income, all $52 of income has to be reported. 
must be reported. Again, the only way it wouldn't be reported by Apple is if there was some type of offsetting loss that would carry over from the previous year. From the previous year. Okay, that's fine. We understand that. And again, the question's asking how much of the income or loss does Apple have to take into account in year one and two? We just answered that for the income and loss portion. So year one, Apple gets to take advantage of the loss of so $27 of loss subject to limitations. But in year two, Apple has to record all $52 of income that's allocated to Apple. Now we need to also solve the next part of the question, which is what is the effect on the stock and loan basis? We already did it for year one. In year one, the ending stock basis is zero. We calculated that. In year two, I'm sorry, in year one, that was a stock basis, zero. In year one, the loan basis is three. Is three. And we brought that over to the beginning of year two. This is the beginning of year two. So the ending balance and adjusted basis of year one rolls over to the beginning balance of year two. But now what we have to do is remember, loss reduces basis. The income increases basis. It, it makes it go up. It makes it go up because this is going to increase our taxes. And the idea in, in, um, in partnership tax and S corporation tax, because we're a flow through entity, the idea of one level of tax, if we don't increase our basis by the amount of income we report, we're going to get hit with double taxation because you're going to get hit at the, um, at the, uh, two times when you only should be hit one, one time with tax, which the owner was already hit with tax when it was allocated to them. Um, the year that it actually occurred. So this $52 has to be allocated to increase the bases of each. And the question is, what is, what is the order? So the way we increase when we have stock and loan basis, if we just have stock basis, we just increase the stock basis by the amount. We would just add it all to stock, but the order now with the reduction first, we reduce the stock basis. So you might be thinking, okay, first we're going to increase the stock basis. But the question is, what do you increase it to? You could have infinitely positive stock basis. You could have a billion dollar stock basis and it could be worth $10. It's just when you sell it, you're going to have a loss. So that makes no sense. When you think about it for a loan, the loan amount, we have a face value of $10 and the amount that was uh, specifically loan was $10. So we're going to increase first the loan basis to the face value. And that's why we need the face value. So, oh, that's why the face value. So we start with a $3 loan. Think about it. We can only go to 10. That is our limit. So we're going to put seven to 10. Now, if there was only $4 of income, it would just go to a loan. We do three plus four and that would give us seven. Or let's say we did $5 of income, three plus five will give us eight and nothing will go to stock. Our stock basis would be zero. But the the, the ordering is when you're increasing for income, when you have stock and loan, you increase the loan basis up to the face value first. Okay. And our face value is 10 and we have three already. So 10 minus three equals seven. So we bring the stock basis up to the face value of 10, the remaining amount, the remaining amount. So the second step, if you have anything left, the remaining amount goes to stock and it goes infinitely positive. So stock, so nothing can have negative basis, but it can be infinitely positive. It can be a billion trillion dollars. doesn't matter. So second, we give all the rest. So 52 minus seven, that's going to equal 45. We have $52 of income that should increase our stock and loan basis in total. Both of those in total, we've already done seven. That was the first uh, step. Second, 45, we're going to increase our stock basis by the 45, we started the year with zero. So now we end with 45. And if this was income of a billion dollars, we would allocate seven to loan because we can only go up to $10 face value. And then the 999,999,993 dollars would be allocated to the stock basis. And we'd have that because zero plus that amount would be that amount, 9 million, 999 million, so on, whatever I said. You can go infinitely positive. So that is how we do this. So we've just answered it. Again, to summarize how much of income and loss, we're able to take all $27 of loss because we had a total of $30 taking, taking into account the stock and loan basis. Now, if this $10 of loan was not personally loaned, we could only do 20 and seven that would be carried over. And then what would happen is the $52 of income would be offset by the $7 of loss that we couldn't offset. And then you have $45 of income for increasing your bases. And you would do the same order. You would increase the loan first and the stock in that, in that order. But we don't have to do that. We have all we have $30 of, of basis total stock and loan we add together. 
and considering the amount of loss we can take. So we get to take all $27 of loss allocated to Apple. We do have to take into account the effect on the basis. We reduce the stock basis down to zero first, and then we reduce the loan basis down to zero next in that order. And again, that makes a difference because if you sold the stock the next year, then you would have a zero basis versus a $3 basis, which would create potentially more gain. And then when you pay off the loan, that could, you know, there was a timing there. Okay. So people always ask, why does this make a difference? If a loan is collected in the future, you look at the basis, a $3 basis. If the stock is sold in the future, you have a zero basis um, at the end of year one. Um, if you have distributions, distributions, we don't get to take, in, take into account the loan. That's another topic, more advanced topic, not part of the tax general concepts, but that's something to consider. Distributions, you don't get to take, take into account the loan basis, and that would affect the distribution in the future because you'd have a zero basis in the stock, not a three basis in the stock. Okay, And then year two, we have $52 of income must be reported. Income again, unless you have a carryover or a loss, pretty much have to rec record that income. So $52 of income to allocate to Apple must be reported the entire amount. And then finally, the question is, what's the stock and loan basis going to be? Because at the beginning of the year, it was zero and three. What's it going to be? Well, we start by increasing the loan basis up to the face value of 10, and then we increase the stock basis for the remaining amounts, which here is 45. So 45 and 10. And that goes through um, a very challenging topic, a very important topic. This is something that's tested frequently on CPA exam, different exams, bar exams, many different tax exams, um, very frequently tested in tax classes. It's very important because um, when you're thinking about S corporations versus partnerships, remember that partnerships, you get to take into account the basis. I'm sorry, you can take into account loan for basis, but you also do technically for S corporations if you personally loan. So you have to know these special rules and how they work out.